First seeing the yard, just seeing the row after row after row of dogs, uh, you obviously knew it was, it was a huge yard. It was going to be a huge dog yard. Dogs chained to heavy log chains, tethered to, you know, dilapidated dog houses, the distinct dirt circle around each one of these dogs just inches apart from being able to reach one another, which continuously keeps them ramped up and trying to fight with, with one another as they're protective of their food and their limited space. And, and that's done you know, really just to help keep these dogs in condition and to keep them aggressive towards, towards other animals. <laughs> Organized animal fighting is a, is a felony in, in every state in the in the United States, and you know sadly it's it's really very prevalent today, uh, much more than a lot of people realize. I mean, animal fighting goes on in many communities around the country. Sometimes it's backyard or street corner dog fighting, uh, but most most of what the ASPCA really gets involved with and pursues is organized animal fighting, which is not only um, you know, one of the most heinous forms of animal cruelty, but it's also associated with a lot of other criminal activity and the people involved in illegal dog fighting are, are oftentimes you know, very dangerous criminals. The ASPCA is committed to putting an end to dog fighting because it really is one of the most uh, horrendous forms of animal cruelty. These dogs are put into a pit and forced to fight one another, really for, the, for their survival. These fights often last an hour, sometimes can go as long as two hours. Dogs are maimed and, and mauled and serious medical uh, injuries and oftentimes don't survive the fights. And if they do survive the fights, sometimes they don't survive the damage that has been done. A lot of dog fighters uh, believe it's a uh, cultural thing. Some of them even equate it to hunting. It's like a privilege or a right they have to actually hunt their dogs and to fight their dogs. They'll tell you that the pit bull has been bred to fight and that's what it loves to do. And the dog fighters use that in justifying putting them in the pit and, and fighting each other. August 23rd um, was was the date of the seizure, but you know th this had been an investigation uh, that we were we were engaged in for you know for a little more than two years um, and had been planning for for months. <laughs> Once the scene is made safe by law enforcement, search warrant has been served, and they'll ask us in to uh, handle the animals. Uh, we have animal handlers, we have uh, forensic veterinarians that are there to examine uh, the, the animals right away. We have a forensic team that's there to seize the evidence uh, a lot of times that's used to train the, the animals or treat the animals, uh, right up to the handlers when they're, they're brought off the, uh, the yards themselves and into uh, into transport vehicles and transported usually to a temporary shelter and in this case it was a temporary shelter. Sure feels a lot better buddy doesn't it? Every dog reacts a little a little bit different um, you know there, there are always a lot of uh, you know a lot of dogs um, that are fearful uh, you know I mean keep in mind um, you know many of these dogs have never had a loving hand um, you know the the you know the encounters they've had with humans in the past are you know feeding watering cleaning um, and then pulling these dogs off to, to really prepare them uh, for the fight. So, so there certainly are, are dogs that, that are fearful of, of humans, um, but overwhelmingly what we see uh, is a very friendly and excited um, and loving reaction from these dogs, which has always been you know, amazing to me and I, I think you know, really speaks to the, the breed. Um, that, you know, they can go through, you know, all, all of this torture, um, but yet still, you know, be, you know, loving and trusting of, of humans. You ready to get out of here? Come on. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. 
Who is that? Who is that? Is that your baby? Is that your baby? Oh, you just want some attention, don't you? You just want some attention. You can see all the scarring from fighting. This particular dog fighter even had the three and four month old puppies out on, on chains already. Getting them used to that activity, getting them used to seeing their adult dogs uh, on a chain and being aggressive. Uh, getting used to that environment, that dog fighting environment, which they were, they were destined at that time to live, live their life throughout a chain except when they're, they're taken off to fight or train. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Huh? How's that feel? How's that feel, huh? That real good. We usually house the dogs away from the area where they were seized uh, because those dogs are valuable to the dog fighters. And we, we know of cases where, where dog fighters have broken into shelters, rescues, and uh, got their dogs back. Because again, they're, they're, to them, to that dog fighter, they're, they're a value. People involved in dog fighting uh, uh, come from all walks of life. Uh, we've investigated and uh, arrested uh, school teachers, high school football coaches, veterinarians, vet techs. It transcends uh, all, all racial boundaries. There's no stereotype, if you will. There are you know, thousands of dollars, um, you know, sometimes hundreds of thousands of dollars involved in, in illegal animal fighting ventures, whether that be from the gambling, from the breeding, um, you know, it's, it's big money, which draws in a lot of different types of, of individuals. You know, getting that champion dog, the dog that, that's won three fights, uh, uh, producing puppies off that dog, which are, which are going to be, uh, you know, cost, you know, up to thousands of dollars for a puppy. Once they're in, in our ASPCA shelter, then it's a team of medical professionals you know, examining and, and treating whatever medical issues exist. These medical conditions and the poor body condition is just neglect. It's a lack of you know, proper care uh, for these animals, mainly because these, these animals are, you know, these dogs are a product. And you know, as we see in you know, oftentimes in puppy mills, there, there's not, you know, there's not going to be an investment in this animal's well-being or happiness because the intent really is just to use the, the, the dog uh, to, to fight and to hopefully, you know, make money for you, um, but they're always discarded at the end. A lot of the dogs that are associated with, uh, you know, organized dog fighting, um, I mean, these are dogs that, that are bred and, and trained, uh, you know, to, to be aggressive to, you know, other, other animals and sometimes are, are not safe to place in a home. But beyond that, you know, we, we see dogs that, uh, you know, just are, are lacking uh, any social skills. And as we begin working with them, you know, in our shelters, um, and, and really trying to prepare them uh, for the next chapter in, in, in our life, we, you know, we, we begin to really see how remarkable many of these dogs are. Some of the behaviors, uh, you know, behavior challenges that they have, um, you know, th these dogs are able to pick those, you know, pick those things up uh, rather quickly and really improve in, in their behaviors and, 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 you know, get prepared to become, um, you know, placeable pets and members of the family. It's everywhere. Uh, the dog fighting is everywhere. Uh, the sheer number of dogs and the places that we seize dogs from, a lot of times they'll have a number of dogs in their house and the neighbors don't even know it. That's, that's kind of like this case. This case was turned out to be, again, a huge number of dogs. Uh, from the initial 367, the number's grown now to, well, to uh, over 400. You know, something this brutal and barbaric should not continue to go on um, in, in this country. And, and that's, that's why we're so driven at the ASPCA to, to really put an end to it.
And on a daily basis, we get a picture back of a, of a dog that's made it you know, to its adopted home. Uh, and you, see, you might see a particular dog that was uh, uh, emaciated, uh, and, you, and you hold the two pictures up. Later on, you can't hardly tell it's the same dog. Uh, so uh, it's, it makes you feel great to be a part of such a, a, a grand scheme. You know, at least these dogs here will not have to live the rest of their lives on, life on a chain. The opportunity to, to really inter intercede and, and change the fate of thousands of animals is right in front of us and you know, I'm excited that we've been able to do that on a number of cases in the past and look forward to, to continuing to do, do that on many, many cases in the future. To help dogs that have seen so much suffering and have such a long way to go and witnessing that transformation and seeing the joy in them is what we live for. And he's completely seems to have forgotten about everything that happened, which is more than we could really ask for. When I, when I first found out that he was in that type of situation, I gave him an instant hug. I, I told myself like I would never let anyone do that to him again. 